Hi, I'm Paleo Emma, and welcome to my video. Let's do a little thought experiment together. Pretend for a moment you live 65 million years in the future. The primitive troglodyte TikTok using Homo sapiens, along with most of the quaternary period fauna, are long dead. And you find this skull. Let's try to reconstruct what this animal was. So the outline is a bit like this, yeah, and then, you know, it had like a, a shrew-like nose. Uh, because, you know, they had a protruding nose bone like that. And heterodont dentition, which means it's a mammal. So plausibly it had fur, Bruh. to an extent, and ears. It probably had ears. So what was this animal really? Huh? But of course, that's just with our layman visual reconstruction ability. So how do professional paleontologists reconstruct dinosaurs? They must hold fossils to careful, careful observation and study. As little details such as hip shape, for example, can clue them in on what phylogenetic tree they're a part of. Looking at their ancestors and cousins and the similarities they hold may help them put together a more full picture of the dinosaur. Microscopic, minute details in the structures of the bones can mean big things. They could indicate things like places for feathers to connect or channels for air sacs. They must also keep in mind the geologic location and time as their environment will have an effect on their physical adaptations. You really cannot underestimate the difficulty of reconstructing an animal having only the fragmentary remains of millions of years past. Paleoart renditions and paleontological reconstructions will always improve in accuracy as our scientific view of what's accurate progresses. Nevertheless, let's take a look at some of the most shite reconstructions. When a paleo artist reconstructs a dinosaur, they must not only have knowledge of its general cosmetic appearance, but also of its living behaviors. How it walked, how it stood, how it ate, etc. It is often the standing posture and gait of old paleo art that is really... bad. Here are some dinosaur statues that were created in the 1850s and to this day are displayed at Bromley's Crystal Palace Park. What dinosaur do you think this is? It's supposed to be an iguanodon. Though via my optical orbs perceiving it, my brain says, uh, no the fuck it is not. But hey, it's the 1800s, it can only get more refined and accurate from here, right? We went from an elephantine quadrupedness and 180 to a kangaroo light upright bipedal constantly looking like they're a frat fella giving a thumbs up in a group selfie. We now know that iguanodons weren't dedicated quadrupeds nor were they staunch bipeds. They could shift comfortably between postures, so it makes sense that this took a while to figure out as this was uncommon for a dinosaur. The Spinosaurus is another dinosaur whose posture has been revised plenty of times. It's been portrayed like this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And now we believe it to be something like this, but honestly, they change their mind on everything about the Spinosaurus every week, so paleo artists beware. Not a dinosaur, but a prehistoric marine reptile, the plesiosaurs were and are very often depicted with inaccurate posture. This swan-like S-pose does not align with the limited range of neck flexibility. If they were to stick their entire necks straight up and out of the water, it would more likely look like this, which in my opinion is entirely more perturbing than the Nessie-esque renditions. Another difficulty in reconstructing the appearance of dinosaurs is figuring out where the musculature and fat deposits lay. In early paleontology, dinosaurs were commonly depicted as fat or bulky, low to the ground, or offensively erect. This was at a time when dinosaurs were regarded as lethargic, slow-moving, simple, unintelligent animals that were destined for extinction, and this sentiment definitely reflected in the artwork. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? We have quite the opposite issue now. Now we are focused on stopping major media corporations from making all dinosaurs anorexic. A common problem we're facing in the modern era of paleo art is shrink wrapping. This is the phenomenon of depicting dinosaurs in a very angular, gaunt, and lean fashion as if they stretched a very thin layer of skin over just their skeleton. No organs, no muscles. This here is a perfect example of shrink wrapping. It kind of looks like the before and after pictures of a recovering meth head. Jesse! This conservative reconstruction became popular in the 1970s. 
This was partly a way to emphasize the animal shape as we see it skeletally, because as we saw earlier, the skeleton and the animal can look unfathomably different. And it was partly just a stylistic choice that sold really well. People rather enjoyed the muscular contoured look on these animals, especially upon the release of the Jurassic Park movies. But now there is quite a strong movement against the shrink wrap method. The fact is, there are few animals that have that deeply sunken in tissue, or distinctions in skin color and texture correlating with skeletal anatomy. Though we don't always associate certain features with reptiles, they absolutely can have elaborate soft tissue, including large amounts of wrinkly or saggy skin, lip tissues which fully sheath their teeth, voluminous fat deposits, full jaw muscles and jowls, and thick or large scales. To close this video out, I would like to show you the worst fossil reconstruction in all of history. With regret, I present to you the Magdeburg Unicorn. Usually when one finds partial fossil remains, they logically presume, uh, this isn't the entire body. That is unfortunately not what occurred here. I'm not sure what happened here. What I can tell you is that these bones belong to the Coelodonta, which is not a dinosaur, but in fact a mammalian megafauna from the Pleistocene. They do not exactly, um, match up. Oh.